Federal student loan payments are set to resume on October 1st after a three-year pause. Interest on these loans already began accruing at the beginning of the month, and millions of Americans are looking for some relief as they face years of payments and thousands of dollars of debt. Joining us now, United States Undersecretary of Education James Qual and Yahoo Finance reporter Rhonda Lee, who covers this uh, very closely. Um, so, uh, Mr. Undersecretary, as we look at this repayments finally beginning once again, what do debtors need to know? What do people need to be aware of? Well, Congress did end the student loan payment pause. Bills will be going out as payments are due in October. And we're really encouraging people to take a look at all of the affordable repayment options. We've created the SAVE plan, which is the most affordable repayment plan ever. We already have 4 million people in it. And we've also worked really hard to fix the loan forgiveness programs we've offered, like public service loan forgiveness, in total, we've identified three and a half million people for loan forgiveness. Um, so come to studentaid.gov and take a look about at what options are available to you. Undersecretary, just wanted to talk about FAFSA. This is uh, most borrowers' first entry point when it comes to student loans. They're applying for colleges and then they fill out the free financial aid to figure out how much they need to pay, how much their parents need to uh, contribute. Major changes happening to FAFSA coming out. Can you talk about that? What can borrowers expect? What's happening with FAFSA and when should they see that new application roll out? Yeah, we're really excited about the changes to the FAFSA. We're implementing some bipartisan legislation that is gonna make the process a lot simpler and easier for students and families. And it's also gonna make the form uh, more progressive. We're gonna have more students who are eligible for Pell Grants. Um, and so uh, both of those things are gonna be possible when we launch the new form uh, later this year. On the other side of this is just the cost of education and, and how much of not just a, a individual decision it is, but a household decision. So how is the administration also looking at making sure that those costs up front that families have to take into consideration and for the sake of the conversation we're having right now, go into an extreme amount of debt over as well? Yeah, you're absolutely right. We see uh, college costs now, it's not just an issue for a student, but it's an issue for their um, families. Oftentimes people who are still repaying their student loans are struggling to pay for their children's education, struggling to start a business or start a home. So this really is an issue of college costs that affects families and communities and really the economy as a whole. We've worked really hard uh, to bring down the cost of college going forward. Uh, Pell Grants are up by the largest amount in a decade. And we're also identifying those places that uh, leave students with loans they can't afford to, to repay. A lot of them are for-profit colleges, and we have new rules coming out in the near future to hold them more accountable for that. Speaking of the for-profit um, stat is that 50% of uh, the students who go into default are attendees of these for-profit schools. So can you go into a little bit about the Fresh Start program to get people out of default into good standing? And also, let's talk to um, borrowers about what they need to be doing, contacting their loan servicers in order to be ready for October 1st. Yeah, thank you for the question. So it, before the student loan pause, we had a million people a year defaulting on their student loans. Um, these are disproportionately low-income students, students of color, first-generation students. Uh, and it can be very costly and very punitive. Um, if you have a loan and student loan in, in default status. So um, we have created the Fresh Start program that gives everyone an opportunity um, to start a repayment coming out of the pause on, uh, uh, on a new beginning, just like all other students have. And we're asking people to call their student loan servicer or come to studentaid.gov and uh, elect to participate in this program and, and choose a repayment plan. Um, that's really important to do uh, if you have a loan in default. Um when you think about the longer term goal here for debt as it relates to higher education in this country, do you guys have a goal in terms of, do you want to reach a point where we have no students take on debt in order to go to get a higher education? I mean, how are you thinking about this in sort of bigger terms? Yeah, well, one thing that we've made a lot of progress on is trying to clean up the student loan program and make it more affordable to repay your student loans, especially if you're in public service, you have persistently low income, you become disabled. The second step is investing in the upfront cost of college. And that's where doubling the Pell Grant, free community college come in 
and those goals are ambitious, but they are achievable. The president pays for them um, within his budget. And then the third step is looking at where does all this unaffordable debt coming from? And a disproportionate share does come from for-profit colleges. We need to take a look at those programs that are leaving students with debts they can't afford to repay and figure out what a better option is there. Can we improve the value we're offering students or do we need to finance those programs with scholarships or other means? Our thanks to United States Undersecretary of Education, James Qual, and our very own Rhonda Lee. Thanks for joining us for our Student Loan Week.